Alrighty. Yo, yo, yo. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of the Afro Matt Show. I'm your host, Afro Matt, and today we have a banger of an episode. We have a lot of news lined up, a lot of TikTok. I, I was easy on the TikToks last time, so if you're if you like this for the TikToks, then stay because we got a lot of them. So, um, you know, without further ado, let's get into it. Actually, I did. I um, let's see. No, let, yeah, let's just get right into it. Spare no expense. All right, the news. The news. I guess I should say, hey, if if this is your first time listening, thank you. Uh, this is episode 106. It is this, uh, February 5th, and we are on the, th- the fifth episode of season three. So welcome if you're new. If you're not new, hello, and thank you for um, being here. All right. I... I the reason I'm doing that is someone said that they liked when I did that before, so I'm going to do that now, right? So, okay. Just appeasing that one person. <clears throat> All righty, let us get into it. Um, let me turn my phone vibrations off because that's um really annoying. Okay, we don't, uh, oh yeah, no, this is not a problem. Um, so this was published two days ago? Yesterday. This is an interesting headline. Um, so this is from like pokercasino.com or poke, pokecast.com where they talk about sports betting, um, investment, "Quote unquote sports investment type situation." Um, so this is their headline. It says Tom Brady's retirement announcement has made Miami Beach sand a hot commodity on eBay. According to a new eBay listed on Thursday, a person extracted eight ounce eight ounces of sand from the exact spot where the NFL quarterback Tom Brady filmed his retirement video, initially listed for six hundred dollars six hundred and seventy seven dollars. The latest bid for the jar stands at approximately $100,000. Now, it's probably, I mean, it's probably money laundering. That's the situation we're talking about here. But um, sand seen from Tom Brady's retirement video auctioned off on eBay. As per the eBay seller Gadget G's, The jar containing sand from Tom Brady's retirement video location is one of two unique samples. You will find no other listings like this. No one else took this sample on February 1st after the GOAT posted his real retirement. You'll be owning the very land the GOAT retired on. Here's here's the video. I actually haven't seen this. Good morning, guys. I'll get to the point right away. I'm retiring for good. I know the process uh, was a pretty big deal last time, so when I woke up this morning, I figured I'd just press record and let you guys know first, so I won't be long-winded. If you only get one super emotional retirement essay, and I used mine up last year, so uh, really thank you guys so much to every single one of you for supporting me, my family, my friends, my teammates, my competitors, I could go on forever. There's too many. Um, yeah. Thank you guys for yeah. allowing me to live my absolute dream. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't change a thing. Yeah, I'm sure you wouldn't change a thing because you're like worth you like a hundred million dollars. I'm. I don't know where I heard this, but I heard that his wife, she's like a model, is worth more than him. So let me. I'm look before I say that. I'm gonna check the val- validity of that. Tom Brady wife Tom Brady's wife is Giselle Bunchin um she is oh 
my bad. Ex wife net worth. Giselle Bunchen net worth reveals that if she if she made more or less money than Tom Brady than if they had a prenup. Since her divorce, Tom Brady um the fans have wondered about Giselle Bunchen's net worth and if she if they had a prenup to protect their multi-million dollars in assets. We'll explain that later on. Um Let's see. Just get on with it. Um, in 2000, she debuted as Victoria's Secret Angel. She worked at the brand new retirement age. Um, okay, so she's a yeah, she's a model. She makes 40 million a year. And Tom Brady only makes 30 million a year. According to Celebrity Net Worth, the website, Tom Brady is worth $250 million and has an annual salary of $30 million. Look, we do not have a problem here. In this, Look, in the country, we do not have a problem uh, uh, about wealth disparity at all. It's, it's non-existent. We're talking about two people who are um, rich beyond measure. She, they make thirty million a year, and that's not a problem. Okay, one, that's not a problem, and two, I, Tom Brady he has a skill. His skill is throwing a ball at a target location at a relatively fast, you know, pace. He he's got an arm on him. His arm is worth thirty million dollars a year, and his brain, I guess, the tactics and how he memorizes, but that arm. You know, that spiral, $30 million a year. Now, what makes Giselle Boonchin worth $40 million a year? She doesn't throw a ball. She doesn't memorize plays. She doesn't... Now, what does she do? Um, She is worth more than Tom Brady based purely off of looks alone. Um, now, I mean, go first off, go girl boss. First off, that's a girl boss moment and I don't want to I don't want to take that away from her cuz she is a girl boss and she's getting her she's getting her girl boss moment. And um I hope Tom Brady got that money in that prenup. I'm not going to lie. In that divorce, I hope Tom Brady took every every half of that worth, took it to the bank, straight to the bank. Imagine a world where Tom Brady, who's like probably one of the top paid athletes alive, is dating a model who makes more than him. Those, I mean, that... What, how do you raise a kid? How do you raise a kid in that environment where both your parents make a combined almost 100 million, 70 million dollars a year? What are those kids like? Are those kids like kids that are like that? I assume grow up with like no notion of money, like how much things cost and you know, work, like work equals money. Or like time equals money. They don't really have any sense of that. You know, like um, Beetlejuice. There's this guy named Beetlejuice. And he talks, he he has no sense. He has like a disease, not, not a disease, a disorder where he, he like, I guess he's he has a mental deficiency, a supreme mental deficiency. And he can't really tell money. He can't really tell time or whatever. And he just like starts babbling when it comes to money. Um, let's see. Um Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice talks about money. Dude, this guy's so funny. He has a tiny little head. I've talked about him because um he looks like um he looks like the mayor of Chicago, which is I mean pretty good. Um 
Beetlejuice counting his money. This time it's seven. Count the money. Tell us how much out of the seven dollars is there. Uh, what? Can't fool me. This like nine dollars. So this guy, so they, so, so these, these guys, they're like his caretakers, but I mean, really they're probably just making money off of his like wildness. So they hand him $7 and they're like, out of the $7, how much money is there? And Beetle just can't tell. I mean, he just can't tell how much money it is. This is how I imagine Tom Brady's kids are like, you hand them $7 and they're like, this, this is time them. at seven. Count the money. Tell they've, us how they've never seen a single dollar bill. They've only seen big money, like big hundreds, only hundreds, fifties, maybe fifties, maybe the grandparents on the birthday, fifties, maybe much out of the seven dollars is there. Uh, what? Careful, it's like nine dollars. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, like just no, no recollection. Beetlejuice is the OG, dude. Beetlejuice is so funny. Here he is. I weigh over 600 pounds. I know you're 600 pounds. How tall are you? Aren't you like six feet tall? No. I'm yeah, about 100 <laughs> feet taller. Yeah, right? <laughs> but how much you weigh? There you go. At least a lot. Okay, that's huh? what I thought. At least about 100 pounds. How much? At least about over 400 pounds. How tall are you? <laughs> taller than me. I'm about 100. At least. I don't pay it, dude. Oh, that's how tall you are? I don't pay it, dude. And how tall is that? What number? Six seven. Six seven. Six seven. Dude, he's just such a small little dude. Here he is peeing in a little stall with his pants all the way down to his ankles. <laughs> oh god. I love little Beetlejuice. juice. But that's like I mean you know, good on good on Tom Brady to retire now that he um he had a good run. Apparently, the Super Bowl's coming up soon. I didn't really know about it. Apparently, that's next weekend. So, um, I guess I'll make my prediction now. I don't really know anything about sports, but for the sports listeners here, for the sports fans, I'm going to make my prediction. Final prediction over under sports bet talk here. Um, first off, I need to know what teams, what teams, um, are going to the Super Bowl. What teams are going to the Super Bowl? Super Bowl. Um, it comes down to four teams. Okay, so there's four teams left. Okay. Can I get a bracket? Can I get a Super Bowl bracket? Super Bowl... Uh, bracket updated. All right. NFL playoff bracket here. Okay, here we go. It is Kansas City versus Philadelphia Eagles. The Kansas City, not Chiefs anymore because that is racist. Um, the, the, oh, wait, I think they are Chiefs, actually. Were they Redskins before? What were they? No, it was the Washington Redskins. And now they're just like the Washington, Washington people or something. But um, so San so San Francisco lost to Philadelphia. Okay, cool. Cincinnati lost to Kansas City. Okay, so the Super Bowl, and this is Super Bowl like probably what is that? L V I I. What is that? Uh, sixty two. Is that sixty two? L V I I. Is that that's sixty two? I think. I'm not too sure. Whatever. Um. Oh wait, no, that's uh fifty fifty seven fifty seven. I I don't I don't really don't, honestly don't care but um Kansas City versus Philadelphia I'm going to call Philadelphia on this I don't know anyone on the teams but I do know that Patrick Mahomes is in Kansas City and he tried the last two he got to the finals in the last two times and choked his whole team choked so I'm going to say can Philadelphia is going to take it and I'm going to give you the point spread here. So it's going to be Philadelphia takes it, um, let's say 20, 23 to uh, 23 to 15. All right. That's my 23 to 14. Sounds good. I, don't, I really don't know how spread works, but 
We're going to call it that. Um, that being said, so timestamp this. Come back. We'll come back next week. See how well I did. I'm not going to put any money on this, but we'll see how well I did. I, those people that watch, there are people that watch the Super Bowl for like the commercials. And I used to, like when I was like, when I was younger, I used to, on the day afterwards, I would, I would type into YouTube and this is how stupid I was. Commercial best. I would type in best commercials from Super Bowl 2020, whatever, or, or 20, whatever, 2014, best Super Bowl commercials from 2014. I kind of want to see what was going on. Best Super Bowl commercials 2014. Let's see what was going on in 2014, Super Bowl commercial-wise. Top 10 funniest Super Bowl ads. Oh, yeah. This is real time. Number five. <laughs> okay. This is someone's channel. This is so this guy's channel, he's called the Super Bowl Ad Man. This is this guy's channel. Super Bowl Ad Man. This is Radio Shack. This is probably Radio Shack's last commercial ever. What? The eighties called. They want their store back. Oh yeah, gotta play that nostalgic music. They really cash in on everything here. It's time for a new Radio Shack. Come see what's possible when we do things together. I've never seen a Radio Shack. Number four. Number four. Oh yeah, this is classic. What's happening? Oh, grizzly bears in the shop. Grizzly bears in the shop. Oh, shit. Knocking over cans. Oh, he wants... Ah, it's Chobani! He wants a Chobani! He just it's wants his these days to find food made with only real natural ingredients. But it's Chobani. It's the only way we know how. A cup of yogurt won't change the world. Are you all right? But how we make it might. Chobani. How matters. <laughs> I mean, Chobani taking themselves a little seriously. I want to look at this guy's channel, though. What does he do when there's not a Super Bowl going on? The crash of cars kill real. Super Bowl ads of the 25th year celebration. One year ago. Super Bowl ads from the 2022 25th year. So, so he literally just posts ads. I want to know what this person, like what are the ad people doing? Like the people that get really excited about the ads. What do they do? And what do they, like what goes through their head when like their, their day to day? They're at the coffee machine. Hey, you see that ad yesterday? The day after the Super Bowl, they're like, see that ad yesterday? I don't mean to brag, but I have about 1.7K subscribers on YouTube. And that one was one of my most popular ads. They're like, did you make, did you help make the ad? He's like, no, I just, just screen recorded it and posted it because I liked it. It was a good ad. One of, one of my favorite ads. Yeah, I'm working on a new top 10 ad list. Nothing much. Nothing much. Just a little bit of a side hustle. Making tier lists for the Super Bowl ads every year. People always slightly concerning. Like if you met someone. And if you are this type of person, please message me. Or email me at theafromatshow.com. Or theafromatshow at gmail.com. Email me. Tell me what you like about the ads. Like, do you like their that they're funny? Do you like that they have, like, the nostalgic music? Do you like when they have, like, a really cool celebrity guest? Hey, today we're having, um, 
John Cena. John Cena's going to bust in and he's going to say, he's going to go, oh yeah, and he's the Kool-Aid man. It's John Cena as the Kool-Aid man. I don't know, like, how does, and these ads, they pay 50, let, let me see, how, how much does an ad on the Super Bowl cost? How much does the ad on the Super Bowl cost? Let's see. How much does it cost to go to the Super Bowl? No. How much does a commercial cost? One ad. Okay, so one ad costs upwards of $6.5 million for a 30-second ad. So these people are spending $6 million for an ad for 30 seconds. That price is about 20% increase from the last time uh, NBC hosted the Super Bowl. Um, they only saw bids as high as 5.6. And in Super Bowl 55, it was 5.6 again. So Super Bowl prices obviously are rising slowly. So it'll be interesting. Uh, who's the halftime show? Halftime show Super Bowl 57. Rihanna headlines Super Bowl 57. Okay, that's a show. That's a free performance that you get. Um, maybe she'll sing Umbrella or something. I'm not too sure. I'm not familiar with a lot of Rihanna songs, but I do know Umbrella. Um, the, the last time I heard Umbrella, I was like 14, maybe 13, or maybe even younger, at a book signing, signing event for... Rick Riordan, author of the Percy Jackson series. I think that's the last time. Um, but they were playing it in like the convention center. I remember it being kind of annoying because they played it like six times throughout the thing. Speaking of playing six times, the new, I don't want to get into the new Miley Cyrus song. It's not bad, but you've got to stop playing it. You've got to stop playing that song. I was in Walmart for maybe 30 minutes tops. I heard that song twice. That's too much from the actual radio. That's it's just too much. I'm I'm sorry. Um apparently that's like the most popular song in the whole like world right now is that Miley Cyrus song. Um it's just a lot. It's just a lot to handle. I can't not all the time, okay? <clears throat> all right, let's move along. Um, okay, so we got retirement, sand, okay, here we go, this one's fun, so Black History, I, f February's Black History Month, first off, I should have started off by saying that, I should have started off by saying that, but I now will, to make up for it, mention that, um, I recognize the struggle, I, I, I can't recognize the struggle. I don't, I can't sympathize with it. I empathize. I can kind of, I empathize with the struggle or maybe I sympathize with the struggle, whichever one isn't going to get me in trouble. I am for the struggle right now. I'm an ally. Of course I'm an ally. I, I would never be anything but an ally. Um, I, I don't, I mean, I don't have many friends, so I don't have any like, BIPOC friends or anything like um was that what was BIPOC by uh, by people of color um I don't have any POC friends in general but I don't have many friends being that being said I've like two two three friends right um so I'll work on it February will be my month February will be my month I'll get a POC friend okay we'll get a person of color in the mix We'll start workshopping that. And that's my that's my promise to grow as an individual and grow in the month of February for um, my um, ongoing education towards 
um, equality for equality in not only the workspace, but in culture, um, I'm, I'm here for it. And I'm, I'm an ally through and through an ally. Um, but yeah, I'll keep you updated on my POC friend status. Um, as I'll put an ad out on Craigslist or something, looking, looking for a person of color to be my friend. Um, it doesn't have to be a permanent thing. They, if they don't like me, it's an open door policy, right? I don't, it's not like I, I own my friends. I don't, it's an open door policy. You come in, you come out. If you don't, if you don't want to be my friend, you can leave, right? Same, same with anyone. Okay. So I'll keep, I'll keep you updated. I know February is uh, black history month. So I'm, I'm right there with you. And you know, if you need anything, if anyone needs anything, I'm always here. If you need anything at all, I'm here. You have my, my business at email is in the bottom. If you need anything, my social security number, my bank address, my, my routing number, my anything, it's yours. Take it. Okay. Um, it's, it's the least I can do. Um, my ancestors, I mean, we're white, so it's the least I can do the least I can offer in, in, um, in reparation for that. So, um, that being said, um, man, I, that felt really good to get off my chest. Cause I, I, I just want to put that out there. That felt really good to get off my chest. I feel like I've been kind of bottling that up for a while. Um, and I feel like there was just a lot of like negative energy and the vibe was off before I mentioned that. But now that I've, I got that out there, I should have, I really should have brought it up at the beginning of the podcast, but I didn't, which is on me. It's my show. And you know, this is the first podcast of the month of February. So it should have been utmost forefront first thing that happened and getting it out of the way. I mean, feels and I'm not saying out of the way as it's a chore. It, it, it's, it's just, it, it relieved me of so much pressure. And I feel better for it. And I feel like um, I'm ready. I'm ready to move on in the, in the, in the podcast now. So um, that being said, let's move on to the next headline. This is CEO quotes Martin Luther King while announcing layoffs. Jennifer Taheja, the CEO of cloud computing company, uh, Pager, Pager Duty apologized after quoting Martin Luther King during the company memo announcing layoffs of 7% of the company's staff. This is fun. I always love layoffs because no one really knows how to do layoffs. They do them over Zoom and they're like, hey guys, I have an awesome announcement. Join the Zoom. And then they join the Zoom and they're like, yeah, you are uh, terminated immediately. No severance pay. Good luck. Um, or, I mean, it, or you start quoting Martin Luther King, so... Um, here she goes. She announced in the middle of the 1700 word corporate memo, um, to the frustration of employees, employees construed this as trying to cushion the blow from a mass layoff with a sandwich of veneered positivity and corporate jargonism towards the very end of the memo cited. She cited King Martin Luther King, the King to commit to leadership. Oh, um, to comment on leadership. None of this would be possible without you, our leadership, and our board. Thank you for your grit, your resilience, your commitment to our customers, and your support of our values and people. I am reminded in moments like this of something Martin Luther King once said, that the ultimate measure of a leader is not where they stand in the moments of comfort and convenience, but where they stand in times of challenge and controversy. Pager Duty is a leader that stands behind its customers, its values, and our vision for our equitable world where we transform critical work so all teams can delight their customers and build trust. 
So it's uh, a, this quote is attributed to Martin Luther King's Strength to Love, a collection of his ser- sermons opposing the racial segregation in America. Um, and then later, not even 24 hours later, he said, uh, so conditions, uh, okay. Blah, blah, blah. Employees were quick to point out the difference of the original context and the context she was using for the quote. The original context was was for the vision of those who exist leadership that did not abandon anyone and did not flinch during hard times required. The context was uh, was was less than noble. The way I was commuting, uh, and this is her trying to apologize because now she's in trouble for doing her job. She probably had ChatGPT write this thing, so she's probably like, I didn't even, guys. I asked ChatGPT to write an emotional, an emotional message for laying off people. And it happened to quote Martin Luther King. My bad. My bad. But the way I communicated layoffs distracted from our number one priority. Showing that you're fired. No, she didn't say that. Showing care for the employees we laid off and demonstrating the grace, respect, and appreciation appreciation that they all deserve. She um, said, updating her memo, apologizing for her use of the quote. There are a number of things that I would do differently if I could. The quote I included from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was inappropriate and insensitive. I should have said, I should have been more upfront about the layoffs in the email. More thoughtful about my tone and more concise. I am sorry. Well, you're still fired. This doesn't mean you're not fired. First off, why are you using the business email? All right, if you're reading this, please disconnect your business email you are terminated immediately what if she's just started what if she just like started off way way too like she's like i had a dream (laughs) i had a dream that i could lay off 1700 employees and none of them would complain but that's not the world we live in. The world we live in is hard. It's full of struggle. All right, here we go. I pulled up ChatGPT. Um, ChatGPT, write a script of, or write, okay, ChatGPT, um, write an email as MLK Jr. laying off employees <clears throat> subject important notice regarding dear team i hope this email finds you well i understand stand that the times have been difficult and uncertain and i wanted to personally reach out to you today to provide an update on the state of our organization it is with a heavy heart that i must inform you that we have been forced to make the difficult decision and lay off a number of our employees This is not a decision that we take lightly, but rather one that is necessary in light of current economic climate and the challenges that we face as a company. I understand that this news will be difficult for those of you who have been impacted on this decision. I want to assure you that we have taken every step to minimize the number of layoffs and to ensure that those who are leaving are treated with dignity and respect. We will be providing support and resources to help ease the transition for those who have been affected. I want to thank each and every one of you for your hard work, dedication, and commitment to our organization. You have played along an important role in helping us reach this point, and I am grateful for all that you have done. Please know that this decision is not a reflection of your performance or the value that you bring to our organization. It is simply a necessary step that we have to take in order to secure our future. I appreciate your understanding and ask your continued support as we move forward. If you have any questions, please don't te- hesitate to reach out. Sincerely, Martin Luther King Jr. I mean, it didn't really sound like him. It just sounded like more corporate, but I mean, it is what it is. Um, yeah, so I mean, I'll keep ChatGPT open. You never know when you need it. It, it comes in handy so often. Chinese spy balloons. Chinese spy balloons. What do we have here? The U.S. down suspected Chinese sky balloon. I'm, I'm going to keep on saying Chinese sky balloon because I feel like that's good for the 
A lot of people are looking that up, so it's going to be in the algorithm. Chinese spy balloon, Chinese spy balloon, Chinese spy balloon. Hello. U.S. down suspected Chinese sky balloon after... Oh, no, Chinese spy balloon, not sky balloon. It is... Um, it is a spy balloon, not a sky balloon. All balloons are technically sky balloons. And I, I, I apologize for that. Um, Carol uh, the Carolina coast and moves to recover the debris. So apparently they shot this down. So let's see. <clears throat> the U.S. downed a Chinese surveillance balloon. And several people caught it on camera. The government told, like, the government came out and they said, please, guys, do not shoot at this balloon. Don't take pop shots. Oh, here's Biden. He said, we're going to take care of it. That's fun. I mean, it, it's, it's a little weird that there's a balloon. And so they it got down. So it came in from like the East Coast, no, from the West Coast, and it got downed in North Carolina. Why did they let it cross the entire country before they downed it? Whatever it spied on, it really kind of got it. It got what it came for, kind of looked at the whole country, and then got downed. It's like, okay, thank you. And plus, why did China only send one? Like, if you want to spy... Send like 50. I, I think that people on TikTok found out about it before the U.S. government. There was like people on TikTok posting about the Chinese spy balloon. Hours before I even found anything on the news about it. And then like maybe 10 hours later I saw, or not even 10 hours later. Yeah, maybe 10 hours later. It was like a whole shift, like eight hours later. They were like Chinese spy balloon downed in North Carolina. Like it's like. Okay, so now they're recovering the debris. They're probably going to see what, what it was doing there. Um, apparently, the Chinese, like, president is kind of pissed because, I mean, you mess with his, like, little project. I mean, he's he has a balloon. So what? Big deal. He's into balloons. He's sending a balloon this way. It's also kind of like a kind of like a weird thing. We're in the middle of a there's like a war going on in Ukraine. And now we're getting like Chinese spy balloons. I've never in my 23 years of living, never heard of a Chinese spy balloon, but now they're coming this way. So that's first off, why are they being flown in? Why are they spying? First off, you don't really spy on people that you don't really, that you have a problem with. You don't spy on your friends. You spy on, you know, people that you want to see if they're doing better than you. Out of, I guess, petty. What if this is their way of just like scrolling through their Instagram? They're like, I just want to see if America is doing all right. They could have stopped in California, to be honest. They, they flew over California. They got one glimpse at that giant homeless camp. And they're like, guys, what's going on there? They have entire a, a city that's just homeless. Ha like I, I heard somewhere that like. There's 300 million people in America. I've heard that like like 5 or 10 million people are homeless. That's like the size of China's army. Probably. Now I mean I I China's China they they like they force people to go into their army, right? Like, you have to serve time. I know those K-pop kids got shipped out to join the army. I don't know if China does something similar, but... If they wanted to, they could probably get a pretty good group of people inbound. The only problem is, like... You know, if anything happens... I don't think it's going to be any sort of, like, boots-on-the-ground invasion. It's probably going to be, like, a couple nukes here and there... Um, a nuclear fallout in several area hot zones in the country. Um, and then once America's kind of like in the 
on the on the on the back foot, right? Then there'll be a power vacuum. Uh, Russia will take advantage because we just sent like I guess 50 million tanks over there for some reason. So then they'll they'll take advantage and they'll be like, all right, we're taking Ukraine, China. You can take whatever. You can take Thailand. Now that America's on the back foot, America's not patrolling anything. They're honestly not even doing that good economically. Um, I Russia's like Putin's like, you know, I heard that eggs are. Uh, I'm I'm not gonna do a Russian accent. I don't don't even know how it sounds. It literally just sounds Indian. He's like, you know, I heard that uh that eggs cost five dollars in America. Just white eggs, store store eggs, not even good, not even like fresh like they're like the eggs that you like not even the free range grain whatever eggs they're just the white bleached eggs are like five dollars cost as much as a bin of Ben and Jerry's a carton of eggs America's not doing very well so I mean who knows what that has to say China's in, in investigating what's going on over here. Russia's somehow like still fighting Ukraine. Like guys, it's like your little brother. You just have to like give him a noogie for like, just get him in a headlock. Just get that little Zelensky in a headlock, and I mean you got it. You got him in. Um. Now I don't want, I don't want Ukraine to lose, but I will say this, and I did tweet this. If we send another nickel to Ukraine, I will nuke that country myself. I'm I'm over I'm 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 really over it, really, honestly. Like you can ask all the economics in the world, economists in the world, I guarantee you not one of them would say, "Hey, we need to be sending more money to Ukraine." If we lose money, if we just send money, to Ukraine, it just increases all the interest rates here. We don't have the money to support it. it. Causes like inflation. It's just bad news. Like no one wants Ukraine to lose, but also no one wants to like have people starve in America. <clears throat> oh, here it is. Ukraine to receive. Here's the headline. Ukraine to receive 120 to 140 tanks in first wave of deliveries. Ukraine to receive um, Kiev secured pledges from the West this month to supply main battle tanks to find. So why don't we just ship them a freaking nuke? I've said this before. I'll say it again. If you have a hot war and you want it to stop, turn it to a cold war and get give just give both sides nukes. It's like... It's like you're at a playground and two kids are fighting with each other and one picks up a stone and then the other picks up a stone and you're like, hey, hey, guys, whoa, 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 don't beat each other with stones and you give them both AK-47s. Now they're like, well, what do I do with this? If I, I mean, this thing's crazy. This thing's capable of, I mean, mass destruction. But then the other one has the same thought and he's like, well, I know he has a gun. And he's pointing it at me. I have a gun. I'm pointing it at him. I mean, it's, you got yourself a Mexican standoff. That's what we need right now. We need to turn Ukraine into a Mexican standoff. Because the whole thing's just a mess, really, right now. You know, Ukraine should just do a 180 and send everyone to Russia and nuke themselves. Like, just... Pack up. Everyone pack your bags. If they want Ukraine, they can have Ukraine. We're leaving and we're nuking ourselves. You want Ukraine, you'll have it. In 250 years, once the half-life of the radiation from the uranium-237 wears away. Once the radiation from our massive cities that you now occupy... You can have it in 240 years or whatever when the half-life goes away. Well, yeah, when it becomes inhabitable. And I, I, the people that say nukes won't be used, I, I, again, I don't really understand. Because they're like, well, you, Russia would never use a nuke. 
okay, you don't build nukes to not use them. No one in the history of the world, like, to think that the two bombs, and first off, the only country to ever drop nukes is the United States. First off, we're not the good guys in this. No one, we're not the good guys. The only country to ever drop nukes, to drop a nuke, and we dropped two of them, was the United States on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Completely, I mean, vaporizing most in the vicinity and people not in the vicinity were like melting to death as they like ran for their lives, like holding their f- melting flesh in their bundled in their arms, like just trying to leave. And then they were like left as like piles of like ash on the ground. Like people were just like screaming, running in all directions. At that point, it's like they thought the world was ending. Half of those people didn't know the nukes existed. They, they thought it was an act of God. They thought the world was ending, but we just dropped a nuke on them. When I was in fourth grade, I got super mad at my, at my English teacher. No, it wasn't fourth grade. It was like seventh. It was middle school. I, I was yelling. I was yelling at him in class in front of all the students. I said, <clears throat> I, was, I, was, I was yelling at him something. We were talking about the nukes. I don't know what book we were reading, but we were reading some book. I said, do you seriously think the nukes were justified? And he's like, it ended the war. It stopped so much more bloodshed. And I'm like, do you, like, the, we dropped a nuke on civilians. Like, that's like a terroristic, that's got to be some sort of terroristic act. Like, we just, their shadows are still, like, melted into the stone in Japan. Like there are horror stories that their kids probably tell their grand their grandkids probably heard horror stories of that day. They they're like they saw a bright flash of light and then they then they felt the shock wave and instantly their skin started melting off their bones. Yeah. It was a bad day. And I mean to think that everyone on the planet is just cool with not dropping another nuke. I mean, what type of trust do you have in people? I don't, I mean, I don't trust, I don't, I don't trust anyone to not drop a nuke. In, in 50 years time, I can, I suspect a single nuke to be dropped 50 years time. Come back to this podcast if we're still alive. And then of course we'll go into nuclear fallout, nuclear winter, um, the, the sun, the, the whole, the whole planet will be cast with ash or whatever. And the remaining survivors that aren't destroyed by radiation or radiation poisoning and their skin melts off and in black clumps, um, people that survive that will be in for, I mean, hundreds, hundreds of years of, uh, survival in, um, inclement weather inclement it won't be nice it'll be negative negative zero uh, you know below zero degrees below freezing every day waking up not much to eat everything will be radiationed uh, you will be eating each other people will be eating each other um It'll be like this for a few years, and then the remainder, the remaining people that aren't insane, or I mean, if we haven't all eaten, eaten each other by then, the remaining people might be able to, you know, hobble together some sort of civilization and start from square one back where, you know, they might have to maybe, maybe along the way, they forget the English language. They don't use it that often. They're, they're silent. They're hiding from predators. Um, they just go back to grunts and then eventually they, they learn how to, they find tools. They find like an old iPhone and they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. and then they slowly rebuild civilization and then they nuke themselves again. America, look, the, the human race is doomed. It's a constant self-destructive disease that we have. The disease that America has is 
I mean, I guess greed or not even greed is power. People, people want power. And the people that want power want it more than breathing. They want it more than breathing. So they're willing to sacrifice their lives, their kids' lives for more of it. Because it's like an unending pit. And there's no happiness. They don't get happiness out of it. They just feel, it makes them feel big. And I mean, eventually it will happen. I don't know if my in my lifetime, but it'll happen. <clears throat> um, let's see. All right, let's just go into the TikToks. That was kind of depressing. Let's get our spirits up here. This is um. This is a man quitting his job. He's not getting laid off. He's quitting. <clears throat> I, I, dude, I hate trying to play videos on this. Oh, here we go. Here we go. I've been working for you for almost four. This is a message for Casey's General Stores. I've Casey's is a gas, gas, gas years, station. And today, I fucking quit. Why? For several reasons. And I'm going to explain them all to you right now. Oh, no. After almost four years of working for you, I still earn only 50 cents more per hour than the state minimum wage of Illinois. That's not a living wage. It's a dying wage and a starvation wage. And because after four years, the cost of living has gone way up while your wage continues to go down, quite frankly, I'm getting tired of paying you to work for you. You heard that right. When you fail to pay a cost of living increase, you're making me worth less. And guess what? I'm not fucking worthless. I got a text this morning from a coworker telling me that she was fired this morning. Why? Because someone in upper management decided to spend a long time scrolling through video footage just to see if they could catch her doing anything wrong. And apparently, she forgot to pay for some pizza. Some pizza you were going to throw out anyway. Just in the last four years, I have seen five managers come into this store, each one replacing the next as a white, cis, heterosexual female. And I have nothing against white, cis, heterosexual females, but apparently someone in this district only wants them to be managing the stores. I've seen too many minorities get passed over for management promotion. Well, you can a... do better. And yeah. don't think I haven't noticed how you keep jacking up the price on the Newports and the Swisher Suites either. Black <laughs> people in our community certainly have. Dude, no, he did not just say that. <laughs> He did not just say you are jacking up the prices of the new ports and the Swisher Suites. Because the black people sure have. This guy's like, is that coded racism? Better. And don't think I haven't noticed how you keep jacking up the price on the new ports and the Swisher Suites either. The black people in our community certainly have. Because they tell me every day that they can get the same damn Swisher for 99 cents right across the street. Why did he go into, feels... why did he just start saying it like a... Swisher for 99 cents right across the street. It almost feels like you don't want black people in the store. Hmm. And let's face it, you don't recycle shit. You don't recycle the garbage inside the store, and you don't recycle the garbage outside. You don't even put recycle bins for your customers to use. Why is it? You say that you're here for good. Well, who's okay, fucking no, good? There, look, Certainly not the good of the planet. First off, no one recycles. Recycling's a joke. You see those bins? Even stores that have a blue bin, when when the minimum wage worker grabs the bags, they all go to the same dumpster and they all go they all get compacted the same. All trash is treated equal. I, I guarantee you. Even stores that are like it's just too much work, really, to recycle. Planet. So now I'm just gonna save you the time of having to dig through the video for hours looking for something to fire me with. I Oh, <laughs> he, he ripped open his shirt. This guy's crazy. <laughs> this is a guy's crazy. This guy has lost it. This is this is a bit. I feel like this is probably a bit. Why? Because someone in the upper man. This has got to be a bit. He just ripped open his shirt and said, I quit. 
Well, I'm sure Casey's will be very heartbroken after losing a dedicated store manager. If you have white hair and you work at a Casey's, I mean, it's on you, kind of. At that point, it's up. Your life hasn't, you've made it. I think everyone can take a moment, uh, even you listening right now, take a moment and say where you are right now is the culmination of every decision you've made. There's a series of decisions that you've had made from when you were born to when you, and this is if you believe in free choice and stuff and not deterministic, but if you believe that you have free choice, then every choice that you've made has ended you where you are right now, just logically speaking. Um, so, I mean, if you don't like where you are, it, it's, it's your own fault. Um, all right, let's, let's go, let's go another one. I mean, that was so funny. I mean, I, I kind of want to watch that again. Where do the Swisher Sweets? I mean, really, dude, the Newports, you're going to blame the Newports. I try. So look, look at this video. I, so I found this video on TikTok. 3D printer does my homework that chat GBT wrote. So this guy had, this is a kid, by the way, had his chat GBT write the essay. And then he put a pen in the, in the 3D printer. And the 3D printer is now writing the essay. It's so hard and got so far. That chat GBT wrote, this guy's not doing anything. Wild, wild, wild stuff. That's the future, and really, it should be. <clears throat> this is pretty interesting. They're building up nets. So this is a video of the Golden Gate Bridge in California. They're building up nets around the Golden Gate Bridge to prevent people from jumping off. So, it's under construction right now, but if you had plans of jumping off the Golden Gate Bridge, they've got a new installation of nets to protect you from yourself. So, they have, I guess they have such a problem with people jumping from the Golden Gate Bridge to commit suicide that um, it's become a real issue that they've had to address. Yeah. I mean... You have enough money to ins to install giant nets across a giant bridge, but you can't find something to do with the, the homeless people. You know what we should do with the homeless people is put them moving them to Canada. They're way too liberal to not to for the amount of if they had as many homeless people as we had, uh, I, they they would probably be a little bit more conservative. Send the send the homeless people to Canada. They probably have better better lives, to be honest. Although in winter, they probably a lot of them would die. A lot of them would die in winter. Not gonna lie. Maybe that's why Canada doesn't have so many homeless because they they're all dead. If you're homeless for one season in Canada, you die. All right. Here's another group of uh, this is a group of people that are in the same vein as the Super Bowl ad person. But it's the Marvel person. So this is like a, a, a guy who's like, they probably have like the Funko Pops, you know, like those little plastic retards that have like the bob. They have like an atrociously big head and they look just, they have like the soulless eyes and just a plastic figure. In, and none of them take them out of the box. But so... It's like, this is the, the kind of guy, and, and, and here is a TikTok that I found um, that just showed up, and this guy is I shocked. I saw two images from Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania, and my jaw dropped. I had two images sent to me of Ant-Man and the Wasp, and all I'm going to say is... Imagine watching this podcast. Imagine driving to work and putting on the podcast about the man who got texted two images from a movie that comes out pretty pretty soon and he is shocked shocked to the he's an adult who is shocked to the point that his jaw drops to the floor 
um, he is shocked to the point where he brings it up during a podcast about two images he saw from a movie about super a person who can turn big and turn small, Ant Man. Is that my jaw hit the floor with these two images that so put my jaw on my lap? I'm like, I I was instantly dubious about its validity, about it being real. I don't know if this thing's real or not. Although we've gotten a lot of very, very, very real images sent to us, but it's just, I, I'm just gonna say it involved somebody that we do not see in any of the Ant-Man marketing. <laughs> um, and it just put my jaw, in my, again, maybe before the movie comes out, I'll, I'll let people know. Shocking. Shocking. Truly awe, tr truly jaw dropping. When does that movie even come out? I've got to watch it. I, I, I've, shit on, I've shat on it so many times. Ant Man Quantum Mania release date. Ant Man Quantum Mania releases on. Okay. <laughs> it's the 31st film from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Okay, guys. So, it's the 31st film uh, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's enough. It's enough to stop caring, I think. Personally, it's enough to stop caring. It was kind of funny. It was kind of cute when they were doing the Thanos stuff. And you're like, okay, Thanos, he's here. And then once they wrapped up that, I think it's over. I think we can stop with the Marvel heads and Disney, the Disney freaks, the Disney adults who are like, you know, everyone knows a Disney freak. They're, they, they like legally changed their name to like Thanos those people, they named their kid after Chris Pratt's character. They named him Star Lord. Or, you know, these are the types of people that we're dealing with. Where they're, they're full grown adults with, like, I assume responsibilities. And, um, and they are deeply invested in the plot and upcoming plots of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. All right. I mean, you know, it, like what you like, but... I mean, it's it's like the 31st film. Like, I enjoyed Batman, but it, it, it's, it's because it's like... There's been like eight Batmans, okay? Now, if I, if I want to watch the 31st Marvel film, which I probably will end up watching, but I, it's like, it's enough is enough. When does this release? September 2023. All right. The official timeline, wait, wait. Here's the official trailer. And this will surely flag my YouTube channel. I used to ask myself a lot of questions. Scott, you're at XCon. How are you an Avenger? That doesn't make sense. But everywhere I go, people tell me the same thing. Thank you, Spider-Man. That's a good one. Release date, February 17th. That is a day before my birthday. That was a day before my birthday. So that'll be interesting. That'll be exciting. So we get to see Ant-Man. Ant-Man in the Quantum Mania. Ant-Man green, Ant green screen simulator. All these movies kind of look like Spy Kids. Like the old Spy Kids movie. That's kind of what Marvel's looking like to me now. Slowly become that. The Spy Kids movie. Where the guy comes in and it's all, it's literally 100% CGI and he's like, I'm the Dinkler. Hi, Carmen, I'm the Dinkler. 
All right, we'll play this and then we'll end. This Florida Sheriff's Office is being sued over a mock... This Florida Sheriff's Office is being sued over a mock game they call Wheel of Fugitive. <laughs> Welcome to Wheel of Fugitive. You know how it works. All 10 people up here have warrants for their arrest. <laughs> we want to get them off the streets and safely behind bars where they can't victimize anybody else. Let's see who our Fugitive of the Week is. Once the spinning ends, the presenter reveals the full name and birth date of the fugitive selected, as well as the reason for their warrant and their last known location. These videos are published wow. weekly and garner thousands of views. <laughs> now, the sheriff's office is being sued by David Gay, who says he was already in jail when he appeared in an episode <laughs> and therefore was not a fugitive. In the lawsuit, Gay claims it ruined his reputation, created anxiety and depression, and caused him to lose a job because a potential employer allegedly saw the video. In he lost a job. He, he, he lost a job because they thought he was a fugitive. He was in jail. One Florida Today analyzed the videos and found that nearly 33% of people featured in the videos were not fugitives and in most cases were already in jail. Despite those findings and the new lawsuit, the Brevard County Sheriff's Office continues to post weekly episodes. All right, well, I'll, I'll oblige. Wheel of Fugitive. Wheel of Fugitive. So they post... They post weekly episodes on this. Wow. Interesting. Three days ago. Hello, everyone. I'm Sheriff Wayne Ivey, the Brevard <laughs> County Sheriff's Office. This is demented. And it is time for a Wheel of Fugitive. Now, you they know have a scrolling. They have a scrolling text box on the bottom that says, "All suspects are considered innocent until proven guilty in a court of law." We want Subjects to make sure identified we get them all out of the jail and discussed so in this episode We're going to give had them a outstanding of incentive, warrants be the of the week. in effect at the County. time this episode was re was filmed on 2-2-23. Here we go. Spin that wheel. Who do we got? Who do we got? Whoa. Right, folks, this week we're looking for James Martin McGoldrick. Mr. McGoldrick is a white male, date of birth 12, 11, 85. His charges are violation of probation, <laughs> reference false imprisonment. He's got no bond. His last known location is the Palm Bay area. Now, Mr. McGoldrick, I'm going to talk to you first. You got no bond. That means you need to be behind bars. Go turn yourself in. Do not make the fugitive unit come kick your door in because they will. I promise you, our citizens are going to let us know where we can find you at. They'll let us know by going to Crime Line at 1 800 423 TIPS. They'll send us an email at willafugitive at bcso.us, a tip on our smartphone app, or just simply a personal <laughs> message on our Facebook page because they want to see you get locked behind bars. Go do uh, the right thing. Funny. Go turn yourself in. If not, the fugitive unit's coming to kick your door in. As always, I want to thank our citizens for their main support. And we'll see you next week on Wheel of Fugitive. Wheel of Fugitive. That was fun. I mean, that's fun. This is better than this Max, the Masked Singer. Why isn't this on television? Wheel of Fugitives. Today we are going to go. And then, so they spin the wheel and then they go find them like an episode of cops it's a live filming they get in the car get the cameras handheld cameras follow them bust down the door and then they get the guy that's the whole that's an ep that's a series right there these guys are on to something and this is the new wave of tv that being said ladies and gentlemen thank you for listening this has been the afro Matt show i went a little bit extra this time because i went short last time so enjoy There we go. Take care. Thank you for listening. Bye.